Moshe, Elliot, thank you so much for the invitation to this wonderful meeting. I'm honored to be invited here, and I'm going to be talking about the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of 810 and 800 diode laser hair removal technology. These are interim results, bear that in mind. Uh, <clears throat> so my disclosures are that I have worked with a number of companies, I've been supported in my research, and I appreciate that uh, association with all the wonderful engineers uh, who have helped us to bring uh, great technology to our patients. Uh, the study objective here was to look at the efficacy of, the, uh, of two devices, uh, two diode devices, and also the subject tolerance. How painful was it? How uncomfortable was it? With the Alma Soprano <coughs> SHR mode using low fluence, high repetition rate, uh, pulse stacking mode uh, versus the Luminous Duet uh, using a single pulse vacuum assist uh, device. Uh, this was a split extremity comparative study looking at the axillae and the legs. I want to just preface my comments that for years I've been somewhat devoted to the Luminous uh, uh, device, the light shear, so I'm a little bit biased uh, toward that. So when the Alma guys came to me to say, are you interested in this? I said, uh, I, I am interested, but, but the results are whatever the results are. And they said, that's fine. So that was it's always a good way to start a study. I'm not the first person in the world to have compared uh, the uh, repetitive rate, uh, the pulse stacking uh, type. In fact, it was Rox Anderson who first taught me about 10 years ago the benefits of low fluence pulse stacking in the treatment of port wine stains uh, with the pulse dye laser. And guess what? It works. It just takes a long time. Uh, so whether it was Marty Braun's uh, study uh, or Mario Trales, uh, my good friend Mario from Spain, uh, who have come before me, I'm very interested uh, in the concept of pulse stacking. So as you see in this slide before you, um, the, the Ruby, of course, was the first laser that was used for hair removal. It's still a very good laser. The reason they don't use it anymore is because above three or four milliseconds, the crystal becomes unstable. Uh, and, and so um, people have moved to the Alexandrite and the diode now. It's very popular, whether it's uh, the Luminous or the Alma or uh, other systems, etc. But you can see at this wavelength, there's a good, there's a good discrepancy between melanin and hemoglobin. Uh, absorption, and you can see that 694, 755 gets a certain depth, 800 gets a bit deeper. Of course, 1064 is quite useful uh, for hair removal in darker skin types, but of course is also quite uh, painful. Uh, and as we realize, without going into it in detail, it's the antigen phase that we're particularly interested where the hair still has some pigment, because that is your target. Uh, for chromophore. Uh, I, I shan't go into this either, but Christine Dirichs has done some wonderful work uh, in terms of um, follow-up studies uh, with regard to telogen and antigen, the lengths thereof. So the two devices I'm comparing are the Soprano XL uh, using uh, low fluence, 5 to 10 joules, a high repetition rate of 10 hertz, uh, pulse stacking with a gradual rise in follicular uh, temperature, that's the key thing here. The epidermis is preserved, but the follicle, that's your target, is uh, heated, uh, which they claim good hair removal with less pain. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Soprano 810, two examples of which, and this is the device. Uh, basically, it's, it's what they call in motion, so you never keep it in one place. It, woo, that was fun. Uh, it's constantly uh, in motion. Uh, and as such, uh, you come back and pulse it uh, a bunch of times. Versus the light shear, single pulse, uh, it depends uh, on tolerance for 6 to 12 joules, something in that order. A large uh, 22 by 35 diode array, vacuum-assisted technology, which again reduces discomfort and less energy is required in compar comparison to the traditional light shear device and increases the efficiency. Both very good devices. Here the light shear, here's the suction unit. Uh, which I say is a very novel device. It sucks the skin up toward the diodes, uh, and then uh, you place it in position, and then <coughs> you flash it um, after the skin is very close to the uh, diodes. 
So the study designed 20 subjects, randomized IRB approved study, axillary and or lower legs bilaterally, one tried side treated by the soprano, other by the light shear, five laser treatments approximately six to eight weeks apart, and three follow-up visits, one month, six months, and 12 months. So we're at about five months uh, now post-treatment, um, and we do uh, questionnaires and follow-up photographs and so forth. Uh, we had, in terms of skin types, no type 1, type 4, uh, type uh, 2 through 5, uh, two patients with darker skin types there. So we've got 20 subjects currently enrolled, 18 of the 20 have completed uh, at least uh, treatment 4, uh, 11 subjects have had their uh, follow-up, uh, one-month follow-up visit after five treatments. We had no unexpected adverse events, and no serious adverse events, but we did have some mild burns, uh, as would you'd expect occasionally from these devices. No blistering, all have resolved. So this is with a soprano, the axillary before. You can see uh, magnification. Again, after, this is after five treatments. Uh, and at high magnification, and I would say very similar results. This is the duet before and after. These are, as I say, on the axilla, nice results. And on the lower leg region, again, before and after with the soprano, and before and after with the duet. And I think you'd see, sitting down there at the back of the auditorium, that it looks kind of similar, and guess what? It is. The results in terms of efficacy was very similar. I think the difference here was the subjective pain assessment. Uh, in the yellow is the average pain scale with, with the duet, uh, that's the luminous device, and in the white is the average pain with the soprano. And I will tell you that there was a significant um, decrease in pain level. Our patients pretty much all said that the soprano was less uh, uncomfortable. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I say, I was a bit biased beforehand, but I've been impressed that multi-pulsing, stacking, does actually uh, work. And as such, I think we should p take note of this, not just for hair removal, but for, as I say, for port wine stains and other conditions. It's like Tom Rohrer has shown us with telangiectasia, with the pulse dilasia. If you multi-stack those, uh, they can go away with four or five pulses, something we couldn't do without cryogen refrigerant. So, in summary, Interim results show effective hair removal of both modalities. Uh, the subjects report somewhat less pain with the soprano in the uh, super hair removal uh, mode. And obviously, we still have one year follow up uh, data pending, uh, but it's likely that these results are going to stand. With that, I'd like to thank you so much, Moshe and Elliot. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>